Hi guys, about four or five months from now, I have to make a decision because my PCP deal ends on the leaf. Now realistically, you have three options. You hand the car back, you trade it in for another one, or you pay off the final payment and keep the car. Now this leads me into a bit of a pickle because if I choose the trading option or hand the car back, which means I have to buy another car anyway, then I need to think of what I'm going to do time-wise because for those that have been watching the channel for a while, you will know that I have a first day Model 3 Tesla reservation. So if we assume that is the case, 2020 really for the first UK deliveries and hopefully I'm going to be one of those first deliveries because although I don't own a Tesla, I was there on day one. So what do I do? Because by the time my leaf goes back, we'll be at the middle of 2018, which gives probably what, 18 months-ish, maybe two years tops before the Model 3 turns up. Anything out there, electric car wise, is a three year deal or, or even longer. You can of course get two year deals, but they tend to be much worse value, certainly compared to the two year deals that they were doing on the previous shape Leafs. So as I said, this kind of leaves me in some sort of EV car limbo. The Model 3 isn't far enough away, even with pessimistic estimates, to get another three year deal. It's just not gonna be that long, and quite frankly, I wouldn't wanna wait that long, even for the Tesla. But even if we forget the Model 3, there's the 60 kilowatt hour Leaf, there's probably a better Golf by then, a different range of Volkswagen, but basically, everything that's coming out EV-wise is all 2019, 2020. And considering that I'll be handing the Leaf back mid 2018 it doesn't give me enough time to to reset the clock pcp wise and get another car and then wait for that to expire so what do you do i've spoken to many people as you imagine i've had lots of messages and there are lots of people on ev forums out there that are in this similar sort of i'm not sure what to do i could probably do twenty thousand miles a year quite easily in a car so i spend a lot of time in it and it's something I don't mind spending a bit of money on because I spend a lot of time in there. I want it to be nice. I want it to be cheap to run. So I'm kind of sticking with the EV route. So getting a thousand pound banger, I don't want to do that. I'll have been in a leaf for three years and that's the maximum I've ever had a car before I get bored. However, you do have to be realistic and financially that has to kind of take priority as most people would probably say as well. <laughs> I'm going to have to change my arm because it really hurts. Anyway, as I say, I'm in this, I'll say it again, limbo. I don't know what to do. I've got 18 months of car to fill and I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Which is kind of why I'm doing this video really, to see if anybody's thought of any sort of plan B. A lot of people seem to be saying the same thing. I'm waiting for X to come out. So I'm kind of putting it out there really. Certainly given the residual values of 30 kilowatt hour 6.6 .6 Leafs, which are excellent at the moment, supply and demand are just way off each other so it might not be a bad idea to keep the leaf financially speaking at least and i'll just have to put up with getting bored the new golf would be very tempting it's meant to be an extremely good car but of course the range is the same as the 30 kilowatt hour i've got now i don't really see the e-golf as an upgrade because of the range i don't really see the new leaf as an upgrade because it's it's a facelift and parts of the interior are literally identical to mine there's a serious button fetish going on, on the dashboard and as good as that car will be as a 30 kilowatt hour owner, I don't consider it worthwhile to upgrade. It's just not worth the extra cost for me. So as I said, I'm trying to get ideas from people out there. What are you doing? Are you in this similar sort of situation as me, where you're basically not sure what to do, which way to jump? Are you going to keep the car? Are you going to hand it back? Are you going to trade it in for another one and then potentially delay this mythical car that you're waiting for in 2019, 2020? What should we do? That does lead me on to another thing. The lead times for current electric cars is ridiculous at the moment. I've spoken to several people who have ordered Ion an Ionique, and basically you're looking at at least nine month lead time. The new Leaf, they do have some colours out there that are almost readily available within a month or two. But if you wanted a certain colour or a certain specification, you're looking at again eight to nine months for certain versions or colours of the new Leaf. The Renault Zoe, I believe, is at least four or five months, even if I wanted one. So that's a long time away. The e Golf, I believe, is up to a year as well. So basically, every electric car out there at the moment seems to have a huge lead time. So even though I'm four or five months off the PCP deal ending, I need to think about what I'm doing now because if I want to order a new one, I'm gonna to have to properly order it this month. This is a weird video, I admit that. I'm, I'm kind of saying something we're not, without actually saying anything. I'm not helping anyone, I'm just kind of, oh God, I'm, I'm a vlogging? And oh, yeah. 
I apologise for anyone out there. I vowed I would never use the word vlog, let alone do one, but I think I've kind of just accidentally fallen into it. So yeah, what do you think I should do? Should I keep the leaf, wait 18 months, then trade it in or sell it or whatever for the Tesla that turns up? Should I buy another new EV? Even given the lead times, I think that's a stretch and financially possibly a bit of a problem. It will also put me in a weird situation for when the Tesla or whatever does turn up that I'll have a car halfway through an agreement, which I know you can get out of, but I don't particularly want to, because it'll cost a lot more money. I don't hand the car back and start from scratch. No deposit, no car. Maybe I should go for something really, really stupid and bonkers and out of the park and weird, which does kind of nicely lead me onto the reason why I'm walking around with the camera instead of being upstairs as usual. Partly, I have to be quiet because my daughter's asleep upstairs. But also, I need a flimsy reason to walk into the garage to show you something that I've had now for about a week and I have to say is utterly amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the transport I have for the next couple of weeks. Oh, and don't get me wrong, part of me would love to have this car for the next 18 months to two years until whatever arrives. But quite frankly, I don't think the missus will go for that, if I'm honest. But it does mean for the next couple of weeks I can do some awesome videos. And I will be doing some awesome videos. And here it is, my transportation for the next week or two. It's a Twizzy! <laughs> That's right, in my garage is sat a Twizzy. A Renault Twizzy, an actual Twizzy. I've been trying to get hold of one of these things outside of the Lake District for a day. For about a year and a half. And here we are. Now this is all thanks to Lewis at eCars Trading who's very, very kindly lent me this bad boy. I'll put the link in the description. He basically sells used electric cars. Uh, so thank you to him. Now I don't fully know exactly what videos I'll be doing yet, but I do want some ideas from you about what ridiculous things I can do in this thing. Whether it's doing a full shop, a commute, uh, a McDonald's drive through I don't know, something bonkers basically. Where, where, where can I take the Twizzy that's going to be a bit of fun and a bit nuts and maybe just crackers and bonkers and strange? Just, you know, give, give me some Twizzy challenges. And when I say challenges, I don't mean like drive to Oslo and back. You know, time time wise is against me. I've only got this for a week or two and I'm still working. So think of something and, and let me know what ideas you've got. Now, there is a video which I will tell you that I will be definitely doing in this, and that is when we take it home to Lewis at eCars Trading. He will be meeting me at Milton Keynes. So me and Harry, two of us, will be driving this thing probably about 200 miles to get it home, to get it where it belongs. Now, considering with two people in it, you're probably looking at 35 mile, maybe 40 mile range at best, and then a three or four hour charging slot. We're going to try and get this thing down to Milton Keynes from North Yorkshire within the day. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be different. It's going to be fun. It's going to be cold. It's going to be uncomfortable, but it should make for an interesting video. Maybe. I don't know. We're not even going to plan it. We're just going to head off, set off and see what we find. Now, it's a week on Friday from posting this video that we'll be doing that journey. So you've only got a few days, probably less, to tell me of any stupid things I can put myself in, in the Twizzy. So if you have got any ideas, please let me know in the comments below or on Twitter. I'll put the link at the end. And I've just got to do this at least once because I think it's the coolest thing about this car. The doors. Oh. <laughs> Lambo doors. How ace is that? And just to give you a sneak preview of the interior, Look at that. That's right, two of us will be squeezing in that thing and doing a 200 mile journey at least to get it back down to Milton Keynes. So I will see you soon. Thank you for watching this almost pointless video and uh, bye. I've got a twizzy. <laughs>